Hello again, this is Professor Oscar Galvis, and this is the instructional video for a complete denture recovery and finishing. This is for the Complete Dentures 2 course at New York City College of Technology. So without further ado, let's begin. At this point in time, you should have all of your complete dentures completely deflasked, still on the model, and selective grinding should have been performed. At this point, we need to retrieve the dentures from the models without damaging the dentures. The illustrations here show the use of a plaster saw to section the model, the use of a pneumatic chisel to chip away any stone pieces that might be stuck in undercuts, and then making use of a shell blaster. The use of a sodium citrate solution can also be used to remove any remnants of stone left on the denture. Now, it is not always that we have all of this equipment available to us in order to recover the dentures from the models. In that scenario, many technicians just use a mallet and a knife. Although not ideal, in the absence of a pneumatic chisel, prying the denture from the model with a knife is the only solution. In doing this, always be careful and pry from all angles. If you only pry from one angle, you have a high probability of fracturing the denture. What can happen is large pieces of stone may remain inside the undercuts within the denture. In this situation without a pneumatic chisel, we're going to show you how to remove these pieces of stone later on. Once the dentures are safely removed from the model, it is important to remove the flash as soon as possible. The acrylic flash is so sharp, it can cut skin. Which brings us to our first step in gross finishing, the removal of the acrylic flash done with a coarse carbide burr. As you remove the acrylic flash, you will begin to encounter the denture borders themselves. It is important to turn any sharp edges into rounded borders. This illustration is used to show the proper use of a carbide burr while rounding borders. When using a carbide burr in only a single vertical direction, as you see in the first image, the result is what you see in the middle image, two sharp edges. In order to create a rounded peripheral roll, we must use the carbide burr multidirectionally, up and over the border, to create a rounded denture border. If the denture was waxed properly, it should be easy to determine where that border should end. The trimming should be minimal. Now in order to check if the borders are sharp or not, run your finger along your denture borders. If they are sharp to your finger, chances are they will feel sharp intraorally to the patient. Take caution in performing these steps. If the denture border is reduced too much, it can affect the retention intraorally. When finishing the mandibular lingual side of the denture, follow the lingual anatomy to contour it properly, making sure that you leave adequate room for the tongue. It's important here we also pay attention to the lingual freedom. When the tongue moves and the freedom hits the denture, chances are the denture will move as well. When rounding borders, it's important to follow the anatomical structures captured during packing. If the borders are grinded too thin, they become a knife edge and they can no longer be rounded. Take caution when thinning borders. Any stone that has lingered on a denture surface can be grinded away with a carbide burr. Usually this should be done in areas in which the acrylic is expected to be flat and smooth. If you perform this on textured areas, you can lose the texture that was created in wax. When performing a gross finish on a maxillary complete denture, Follow the markings of the posterior palatal seal on the intaglio in order to trim the posterior border properly. Don't grind too much and eliminate the posterior palatal seal. Then the denture will lack retention. You can follow the same procedures of removing flash, rounding borders, and contouring just as you saw on the mandibular denture.
When the coarse reductions are complete, it is time to now put a fine finish on the dentures. Switch out the burr to a fine carbide, and you can begin to smooth the borders and contour lightly. There are some dental technicians that prefer to contour the gingival anatomy when the denture is already in acrylic. However, I believe that a majority of denture technicians prefer to contour the gingival anatomy in wax. If the denture has been contoured properly in wax, then contouring in the acrylic will be minimal. Be diligent in smoothing all necessary surfaces. If all the surfaces are trimmed and smoothed properly, then the next step in pumicing and polishing will be that much easier. Burr selection is important for different tasks during denture finishing. For instance, we spoke about using when to use coarse burrs versus when to use fine burrs. In this situation, a small tapered carbide would be best for relieving freedom areas. The denture finishing procedures are complete when the freedoms are freed, the borders are rounded, the dentures are contoured, and the surfaces are smoothed. Getting back into the denture recovery, if a pneumatic chisel was not used and there's large pieces of stone left inside of the intaglio surface of the denture, use a carbide burr to remove a bulk of it. Do this cautiously. You cannot touch the intaglio surface of the denture because it will result in an ill fit. With the majority of the stone removed with a burr, the remnants can be removed with a sand or shell blaster or the use of sodium citrate solutions. A sand blaster is not recommended, but a shell blaster uses walnut shells, which are easier on acrylic surfaces.